On this Nintendo Switch hauled episode, we're taking a look at a clip to enhance handheld mode, some new controllers with awesome features, the most minimalist case we've ever come across, and a ton of updates on some of our favorite gear. This is Sergio AM. Welcome to It Came From A Box. As someone who mainly plays the Switch in handheld mode, even the best grips out there can't do much about the small cramped controls on the Joy-Cons, which is why we prefer a traditional controller. Now, one way to marry the two is with one of these clip mounts. There's a lot of generic ones out there for the Pro Controller, but we stumbled upon one which truly stood out. Raising over $93,000, this crowdfunded Pro Controller clip mount has one of the most unique and user-friendly hinge designs we've ever come across. This is the Fixture S1. At the bottom, we have a large and sturdy claw that snaps onto the Pro Controller. A bit aggressive, but the edges are rounded, which should help prevent any scratches on the controller, and at least on our end, so far so good. Next, instead of a retractable claw, we have a thin mount designed exclusively for the Switch, and it attaches via the Joy-Con rails. It's very secure and leaves all the buttons, vents, and ports easily accessible. Now the star of the show are these magical, awesome friction hinges. Unlike the others, which you have to loosen, then adjust, and tighten, with this one, you just position and you're done. Very secure, and all it takes is one hand to balance it by adjusting the angle and height on the fly. Super simple, extremely convenient, and it works flawlessly every time. If that's not enough, it also has a few additional features, such as a flat bottom with rubber so you can remove the controller and use it in tabletop mode, cutouts so you can charge and play, and it folds down pretty flat so you can pack this easily, especially in their exclusive carrying case to take it on the go. So I know it's just a clip, but it's a very well thought out one and using the switch in handheld mode with a controller is a game changer and makes it very difficult to go back to the Joy-Cons. It's pretty much as close as we'll get to a Switch Pro these days. Before we continue, this episode is brought to you by our friends over at Helium, the people's network. Helium is the world's first peer-to-peer -peer wireless network that provides cost-effective and secure connectivity to all kinds of IoT devices. The network is made up of people. Soylent Green is made out of people. No, not like Soylent Green. Uh, it's people with these long-range hotspots. At the moment, there's over 18,000 deployed and that number continues to grow. This is their sold out original, but there's others to choose from. And once set up, you just place it by your window and that's it. It'll then provide miles of wireless network coverage. For doing so, you're rewarded with Helium tokens, HNT, their cryptocurrency. I'm all the way down here in South Florida and I'm doing my part too. So if you're into the idea of the people's network and want to learn more, check out Helium. Then if you want to help it grow while earning some crypto on the side, you can get involved by getting 5% off your own rack hotspot miner with our promo code box5 over at Calchip. We're very lucky to collaborate with a brand that's doing something we believe in. So please show them some love because supporting them helps support us. Waterfield Designs, one of our favorite brands, is back with another handcrafted high quality Nintendo Switch bag. This is the Dash Express case. It's available for both the Switch and Switch Lite in a handful of colors and styles with this one being their awesome looking Forza Red. As the name implies, it's a clean, simple, pick up and go style pouch. It's not hard shell, it's made of a durable ballistic nylon or a wax canvas, so you do wanna be a bit careful with it. Now inside, it's lined with the same luxuriously soft, fuzzy plush that romantically hugs and protects your console. At the top, we have an elastic band that you push off the side and with a bit of help, the switch slides right in. It's shy of a perfect fit, but there's enough room for the analog sticks to breathe and even one of their optional matching leather game card holders. Also, this larger bag for the original Switch will also work with the Switch Lite, albeit with a bit of extra room. Then you secure it with that elastic strap and carry it with either the loop on the side paired with something like a carabiner or just inception it by placing this bag in another bag in another bag and well, off you go. Over the last few years, some of the products we featured have been updated, so let's take a quick look at what's new. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but they never said anything about making it prettier. Such is the case with Satisfy's Zen Grips, which are now available in two new colorways. 
The first is their Animal Crossing inspired tropical edition in either sky blue or palm green for the OG Switch. Regardless of what you go with, each have both colors mixed throughout. Next is my current favorite, their Ice Edition with this frosted transparent shell along with black grips and padding. Unlike the Tropical Edition, this one's available for both the Switch and Switch Lite and it's our current favorite. So there you go, two new editions of the best asymmetrical grip for the Switch. We last checked out Skull & Co's grip case light for, well, the Switch Lite that featured new grips and a soft clear case and now it's available for the OG Switch. This is their grip case Crystal. Same as the original, it's also dock compatible, but the soft plastic case is much more protective, easier to install, the shoulder and triggers feel much better in use, and it's a great way to show off the switch. As for the grips, this time we have a slide system with an audible click, and there's three pairs to choose from. You have a low profile, thick lined snap grip, the curvy trigger grip with a place to rest your finger, and the bubbly Thick Boy Plus Grip. There's an option for everyone here, each feels great in hand, and keep in mind that you can also mix and match to suit your preference. They're available in a ton of colors to match your Joy-Cons, and there's also bundles that include their case so you can take it on the go. Aside from a grip, one of the best ways to get a traditional controller experience out of the Switch in handheld mode is with Hori's Split Pad Pro, which is now available in new colors and designs. There's red, blue, translucent black, two Pokemon versions, and this awesome Pac-Man version. The printing on here is top notch and the colors are very vibrant. Love the yellow analog sticks and blue D-pad. I'm not even a massive Pac-Man guy, but I really dig this design. As much as we love Hori Split Pad Pro, it's difficult to take on the go due to its size. Previously, only Butterfox stepped up to bat with their carrying case, but now TomTalk has released their own. It's in this red and black colorway with a unique surface of the moon design. Love it. The case is hard shell wrapped in this spill resistant fabric. At the top, we have a wide handle and next to it, YKK zippers with nice straps. Inside, because it's a thin case, we don't have an accessories compartment, but we do have two screen protecting flaps with 30 elastic game card pockets, which I, I'd highly recommend not taking that many on the go. Then we have the larger slot for the Split Pad Pro with a cushion above to prevent the shoulder buttons from bumping around, the slots on the front to secure the analog sticks, and that's it. It's a stylish, high quality case to take the Switch with Split Pad Pro attached on the go. Ghoulie Kit, who makes some of our favorite Switch batteries, is back with their own controllers. I normally rush through this, but the unboxing experience for both is actually pretty noteworthy and each comes with these durable info cards, flat USB-C charging cables, and their own custom protective cases. So let's check out their design and layouts and then we'll talk about the features that both of them share. First up is their Elves controller that caters towards the Switch Lite, hence the matching colors, along with this unique boomerang looking design similar to the Sega Genesis controller. In hand, it feels very solid and lightweight. I like the extended sides and these low grips for your fingers. On here, we've got flat responsive face buttons, thin shoulder buttons, and flat triggers that actuate off the sides. A wiggly D-pad, and two switch style analog sticks with barely any travel distance, making them very sensitive, but don't worry, that can be adjusted. Now their King Kong Pro controller looks and feels just about identical to an Xbox controller. Uh, there's no hiding that, but on here we have glossy flat face buttons, a pretty basic D-pad, slightly loose analog sticks. They're nicely textured and made with metal underneath, same as the ring surrounding it. And that also applies to the large shoulder and trigger buttons. On top of that, in here, it also has NFC for Amiibo, which is pretty rare in a third-party controller. Now, as for features, these share a lot in common. Both are multi-platform compatible with a dedicated button. They're wireless and charge via USB-C. We've got 14 hours of battery life for the Elves controller and about 18 for the King Kong. They have motion controls and rumble, and you can adjust their sensitivity along with the analog sticks as well. Now, they have two standout features. First is an advanced turbo mode that you can assign to any button and then hold it down to rapid fire, but you can also turn it into an auto turbo button that you can press once and it'll fire for 10 seconds or until you press it again. 
And finally is their APG autopilot gaming button, which is pretty much macro recording. You can record any series of inputs for up to 10 seconds, including delays, and it'll then play it back exactly as recorded. Together, these are big features that you can get very creative with for repetitive tasks or detailed input combination. And that is what makes these controllers stand out among the rest and definitely worth considering. Although it looks similar to the others, this is PDP's latest Face-Off Wireless Deluxe controller. Same as before, we have large face buttons, a combo-friendly smooth and concave D-pad, some of the best grippy analog sticks out there, curvy triggers, two paddle cell buttons that you can program, and this top shell is swappable with any of the others in this line. In here, we also have interchangeable D-pad and analog sticks. They pop right off and you can swap them out with the included longer precision stick to increase your accuracy. Now this time around, it has motion controls and it's also wireless with a long 40 hour battery life, but it still charges via micro USB. I'm guessing that's so it can use the same cables as the others in this line. Either way, those two new additions make it a solid choice that can even go head to head with the Pro Controller. New on PDP's roster is their Joy-Con Charging Grip Plus, which gives your Joy-Cons a more traditional controller feel. It opens with a latch at the top. The Joy-Cons slide right in and lock in place. On here, we have nicely sized textured handles with enough room for all your fingers, and it feels great in hand. Up here, we have extended shoulder buttons and triggers. L and R feel just about the same, but ZR and ZL feel way better with a shorter travel distance that has this kind of tactical actuation to it. Finally, it can also charge the Joy-Cons via the USB-C port at the top, making it one of the best ways to keep those batteries juiced up while also upgrading their ergonomics. Not to mention that if you have broken latches, it'll keep the Joy-Cons from sliding around. All right, so you know the drill. Let us know what you think of these and let's talk down in the comments. Also, if you like what we're doing here and want to support us at the same time, check out the affiliate links down in the description below and make sure to subscribe because we have a ton of new content coming very soon. Once again, this is Sergio IM and I'll see you for the next box. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to help us out, you can do so by clicking that thumbs up button. And while you're at it, why not subscribe for more content? It's free. We also love to hear you out. So please leave a comment down below or talk with us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm Sergio IM, and I'll see you for the next box.